thought for the day. Win the morning, win the day. Welcome to 7 Minutes for Yourself. I'm Christina Ina, and I'm so glad you've joined me for what I believe will be 7 of the most enriching minutes of your day. Let's take this time to reconnect with ourselves and improve our well-being. In today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself, we'll be exploring some essential components of an ideal morning routine. Have a listen. First, drop the phone. This will be the hardest step for most of you. If you start your morning by checking social media, your email, and the news, you're suffocating the ability to set intentions for your day. This is a reactive way to start the morning rather than a proactive way. Tristan Harris, former Google design ethicist, describes it well. When we wake up in the morning and turn our phone over to see a list of notifications, it frames the experience of waking up in the morning around a menu of all the things I've missed since yesterday. By checking your phone as one of the first activities in the morning, you are willingly starting your day on someone else's terms. Got an angry email from a colleague? What about a confusing comment on social media? Or maybe it's news about a politician saying something nonsensical again that makes your blood boil. In this manner, you're limiting your starting point and trajectory of your day outside of your own control. You're being reactive. Rather, use the morning as a blank slate, a fresh start with endless possibilities. You decide your intentions on your own terms. This way, you're in the driver's seat. As Benjamin Hardy describes in his book, How to Consciously Design Your Ideal Future, the fastest way to move forward in life is not doing more. It starts with stopping the behaviors holding you back. Chaos breeds chaos and order breeds order. Start your day off with positive momentum with a small win by making your damn bed. Why should you make your bed? As Admiral William H. McRaven said in his UT Austin commencement speech, if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride and it will encourage you to do another task and another and another. By the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. If, by chance, you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that's made, that you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. When you change in the morning, this also means throwing away your dirty clothes in the hamper and tidying anything else away in the closet. Champions don't start their day with clothes on the floor and their room in disarray. Right after waking up, you probably use the toilet and you'll notice your urine is quite concentrated. Take this opportunity to rehydrate, and water is really all you need. If you choose coffee, keep in mind that caffeine inhibits antidiuretic hormone release, resulting in diuresis, meaning your kidneys excrete more water than they would normally. Decreasing friction, even in small ways, is an underrated component in motivating yourself to perform certain behaviors. For that reason, I always keep a large water bottle filled nearby as it decreases the friction to stay hydrated. This way, I don't have to go through the trouble in the morning to go to the kitchen, grab a cup, and fill it up. I know, life is tough. The nutrition piece of the equation is optional here. First, I don't believe you necessarily need to eat anything in the mornings. I personally follow a 16-8 intermittent fasting schedule and start my feeding window at 12 p.m. several hours after waking up. That being said, if you are going to eat breakfast or snack in the morning, get the ball rolling in the right direction. Avoid garbage food like sugary cereals, pop-tarts, or sweetened yogurt. In fact, it's better to skip breakfast altogether rather than eating these highly processed foods. If there's one habit I never miss, even going all the way back to 2012, it's getting my body moving every morning. Given the compounding effects of starting your day off with such a simple yet profound habit, it's silly not to do this every morning. You certainly don't need to follow my exact routine, but I recommend you experiment with motion in some routine form every morning. Stick with it for a few weeks and reflect on how it makes you feel. You can thank me later. Last, practice some reflection and set your intentions for the day. Some people like to combine this with mindfulness meditation, which is an entirely valid strategy. This may include visualization practices of what you envision for yourself later that day. I prefer using a journaling app, Day One, which reminds me with a notification and auto-populates a custom template that I fill out each morning. This morning template includes writing about three gratitudes, three long-term goals, today's targets, and affirmations. This helps me center and start the day with a plan. That concludes today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Today and every day with your kiddo is a gift. 
enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in.